Good morning, everybody. It's Randy with Randy's RV Bible Study. I'm back. Aren't you glad? We're going to do some more Colossians. We'll do some more Colossians today. And I uh, hope you all are enjoying the study. This is a great study. There is some great information here, I think, that we could all learn. I think uh, we're going to talk about uh, Christ indwelling us and how, what that all entails and what that all means and what that ha what what it means for us as believers and uh, how this is a universal thing meaning that everyone who's out there at the sound of my voice can experience this this is a mystery though but let's get into it and the mystery has been revealed and uh, it's amazing what am I talking about I know we need to get in the study because there's so much here for us to learn and for you to to grab on to for your faith in Jesus Christ. All right, let's do uh, Colossians 1, 24. Now, as Paul says, I rejoice in my suffering for you and, and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ. What could be a lacking in the affl afflictions of Christ? Well, Christ has been to the cross and he suffered and died and bled and died for our sins. And now it continues. And it continues through Paul's life. And it continues in the life of believers. The suffering. It's not over. People aren't done. They're still angry with Jesus. And why? We're going to find out uh, why that is. He says, My flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. Of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. What mystery? That's what we're going to talk about. The indwelling of Christ, the indwelling of his spirit is amazing amazing mystery that has been revealed to us now to them god will to make known which are his riches and the glory of his ministry mystery among the gentiles which is in which is christ in you the hope of glory him we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his work, according to his working, which works in me mightily. That word striving uh, is akin to uh, an athlete uh, competing in a, an event, that word striving. So, this is Christ revealing. Well, this is, in, it seems... It's amazing, for one thing. And I'm going to turn that off. It seems uh, so amazing and so intimate how Christ is indwelling his people. Paul speaks of a hidden hidden truths. And this is the... Uh, I'm trying to fix this. <laughs> There's my bald head. There we go. The mystery revealed to the first, for the first time to the saints. And that includes the mystery of the incarnate God. Now we have Jesus Christ is God. For any of you that are having problems with this, please let me know. Please write me. I'm going to have my email. You can write me if you have issues with uh, these kinds of doctrine. This is a doctrine, a dogma. This is the belief that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. People are, are asking me, do I have evidence of it? Sure I do. It's all over the Bible. We've had many, 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 many witnesses to this fact that can attest to this fact. We've seen Jesus Christ on the cross die. We can't find his bones. We, we, we know that all of time hinges on Christ, um, B.C. and A.D. And um, they even want to try, they, the world wants to try to change that uh, because it indicates how... Uh, how much authority Jesus has. So, the mystery of the incarnate God, Israel's unbelief. Now, I've had 
some of you out there say, well, why, why uh, do the Jews not believe? Here's your answer. Go out to Romans 11.25. I'm not going to go there, but it explains why Israel's, Israel has unbelief and why that is. Lawlessness, it talks about the unity of the Jew and Gentile. Here's all these men, uh, the, here's these mysteries. The Jews and Gentiles together now that make up the church and the coming rapture or the rapture to come. And most of all, though, we're going to talk about the greatest mystery of all that is, is of all is Christ indwelling. How intimate can that be? He lives. He lives inside you and me, believer. If you are a believer, Christ is lives inside of you you must be born again to enter in to the kingdom of god to see the kingdom of god you must be born again you are spiritually dead that's it and this is how god's plan is now to come into your life and to come into you literally this is not some figurative language that we're speaking so, Christ indwelling, revealed by the coming of the Holy Spirit. So, hang on. <laughs> I'm going to get there. John 14, 20. At that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. The Old Testament predicted the coming Messiah, and the Gentiles that they would be partakers of salvation. Um, and I have a note here about Nineveh. I'm going to talk about Nineveh. You know, God is loving, 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 loving. Even, even to the time of the tribulation, he's giving people time to repent. Actually, God commands all men to repent. Now, whether they do it or not, that's uh, your choice. But repentance is commanded. Nineveh, the whole city of Nineveh, repented under Jonah's ministry. Now, I think that's something to be noted because God wants, wants all men and women to come to the Lord in repentance. Uh, but the Old Testament did not reveal that the Messiah would actually live in each member of his redeemed church made up of mostly Gentiles that believers both Jews and Gentiles now possess the surprising riches of the indwelling Christ remember the church was started by Jews and Gentiles were at it uh, the Christian church the Judeo-Christian church that's why we call it Judeo <laughs> But both Jews and Gentiles now surpass the riches riches of this indwelling Christ. This is a glorious mystery. The hope Christ in us, the hope of glory. This indwelling Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, is the guarantee to each believer of a future glory. You know, you have a guarantee. I just bought a piece of land in New Mexico. I had to send them uh, what they call earnest money or a guarantee. A deposit, a down payment. Many of you could understand that language. Uh, as you buy a car, as you have to put down payments on apartments, sometimes you have to put first, first, last, and security down. It's like three, three months of, of money down. Uh, Jesus Christ has sent us a down payment in the Holy Spirit. This is how you know. This is how you see fruits. This is how you know believers. You know. The stupendous, it's a stupendous fact that the Spirit of God dwells in you. He, this is a fact in the believer. This is the miracle that I see. We talk about miracles that uh, Christ, in my, and then this is my opinion. So Christ said, you, greater miracles will you do than these. Jesus brought people to, back from the dead. He healed leprosy. He healed blind men, lame, uh, the deaf. Uh, I mean, they were miracles. And But greater 
than this is that Christ would indwell, uh, that's my opinion, that he would actually live inside each and every one of us who believe. Now to dwell, dwell actually means to live, my dwelling. This is my dwelling, Randy's RV Bible study. I live in this RV and by the way, it's hot and my roof air, you guys got to pray for me. My roof air doesn't work anymore like it's supposed to. It's blowing fuses or something. But uh, so, and it's getting hot in Florida. So I, I'm getting a portable air conditioner. That's the only thing I can think of for now. These things are kind of spendy. Anyways, I digress. Just please pray for me because uh, I'm hoping that the air conditioning comes pretty soon because it is, it is starting to get warm here. Uh, the stupendous fact, back to this, that God dwells. A dwell is a dwelling place. It, it, it place it's a, a, a place where uh, you exist or inhabits. Uh, Jesus Christ, through his Holy Spirit, it makes me laugh, but it should make you joyful. He indwells in us. He inhabits us. He lives inside of us. John 1, 14 says the Logos, or the Word, that's another name, uh, a Greek name for the Word, is said to have become flesh and dwelt among us. So dwelling, dwell, to dwell, is to, that's a place where you live, that's your dwelling. So, the Spirit of God dwells inside of us. Isn't that amazing? It should make you want to... This message should make you want to jump and shout for joy. Christ told his uh, disciples to expect, ex expect, expect the paracletos. What is a paracletos? Or a paraclete? Rather, who is the paraclete? That is called them on the side. Uh, and someone's aid. The paraclete, that word, uh, and it's hard because some scholars believe that that can't be translated into. It's such a complex word, the meaning of this word, just with a single English word. Uh, the paraclete uh, means many things. Called to our aid, he's our counselor, he's our helper, our comforter, our advocate, the Holy Spirit is our mediator and intercessor, but I like this. He's the spirit of truth. You know, when Paul talks about the, uh, I'm reminded of the uh, armor of God, put on the best plate of righteousness and the belt of truth. You know that belt was worn by Roman, Roman, Roman soldiers, I can't talk today. Was, was worn by Roman soldiers, whether on duty or off duty. They would, that they'd wear that belt to signify that they were Roman soldiers, even in their pajamas. <laughs> so, you know, I love this, that the Holy Spirit, or, is, or the paraclete, is called the spirit of truth. He also reminds us of truth. He teaches us the truth. It is all about the truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, the way, the life. And John 14, 16 through 17 there, the spirit of truth. So the Holy Spirit also comes to equip and empower and encourage the believer. And after Pentecost, the Holy Spirit uh, went from being with his people and then into Acts 2, para, the word para, uh, I, had, I had a parotid, par parotid gland cancer right here. Your parotid glands are on the side of your neck. You have two of them. I have paratoid cancer or parotid gland cancer. Uh, the Holy Spirit went from being uh, with his people to being in his people. That's I'm talking slow for a reason, but in he is in us in his people he began after the the act acts two 
after Pentecost, <laughs> he, he actually now indwells inside of us. This is amazing, y'all. The indwelling of the Spirit of God and His roles in our lives. He will He will show us His His roles in our lives. Here they are. The Holy Spirit will teach you in all things and remind you of everything I said to you. See, you must be born again. This is what we're talking about: being born again. And you must be born again to enter enter in to the kingdom of heaven. I stress this. I stress this. People, are, I have people that are commenting, and I appreciate your comments, saying that, well, I'm just going to have faith, and that's enough. If you should have faith. You should have faith. But if you have faith, you must believe this word, because this is out of the Bible. The, the, but you can't have anything without the Holy Spirit. And that's what I'm going to get to. You don't have anything. He's the spirit of truth. So if you're if you're speaking non-truth uh, and you're saying you're a believer, if you're not living for Christ and you're saying you're a believer, you're actually using Jesus Christ's name in vain. If you're saying, I'm a believer, but I don't. But I continue to live a certain uh, back to my old way. That's not a believer in Jesus Christ. That is not somebody that has faith because somebody who has faith believes this message right here and somebody who has faith somebody who knows the lord an actual convert uh, a not not a false convert somebody who's been regenerated that's what we're talking about uh, i'm trying to use as many analogies as i can but because the world is full of darkness and the world cannot believe this message and we can't believe we don't come to, uh, we don't even come to Jesus Christ without the Holy Spirit. He has to convict us. So I'm going to show you that. So the Holy Spirit is the preeminent teacher of God's people. He's our teacher. He will teach us all things and he will remind you of all things. Everything I have said to you. Uh, if you've ever like been, wow, where did that come from? It came from the Holy Spirit. I have been reminded of scripture. I have the gift of the word of knowledge. So a lot of times the scripture will pop in my head. It's not from me. And yes, I have read a lot of the Bible, but I, I swear every time I read it, it's like brand new. So I'm, I don't know. Either I have <laughs> Alzheimer's, Bible Alzheimer's, or I don't know. But every time I read this word, and even today, uh, talking about this amazing revelation, how Christ indwells in the believer has been just, I'm dumbfounded, uh, I guess is the word. He's teaching us. He's teaching us. He's teaching God's people who God is. Who's God? Jesus Christ is God. The Holy Spirit is God. God the Father. That is a trinity. That is mind-blowing in itself. Who we are. Who are we? We're sinners. We we need a Savior. Who are we? We're child of after after we're born again, and once we become uh, once once that happens, we become a child of God. We were dead before. We were dead in our sins. We were dead in our trespasses. We were spiritually dead. We were dead people once we, once we, I like my hands. Once we got there, uh, once the Holy Spirit got a hold of us, we became alive in Christ. So we, he is teaching us now his truths. We are testifying what we've seen, heard, and experienced. This is in itself a miracle. Millions and millions of people. People that are now dead and gone. People have gone before us. People now on the earth that believe this same message that are experienced in the Holy Spirit, indwelling of the Holy Spirit, are going to testify this same thing to you. It's the same message, and that's what's amazing. Uh, we testify what we've seen, heard, and experienced. You know, if you watch a lot of products and uh, infomercials and things like that, what you'll find uh, running pervasive through them are testimonies testimonies are strong strong selling points hi i'm bob i use this product and it did wonders for me my testimony to you is selling you on the idea that this uh, will help you or this product you need this product why does this product help me and uh, it will help you and so the testimonies, the testimonies are compelling arguments always in the courtroom. 
we always use testimonies. Eyewitness testimonies are some of the, 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 I was there. I saw what happened. I saw the guy kill the guy and he had a black hat on. I don't know. So, you know, testifying to us, this, we, but what are we testifying? We are evangelizing. We are, that's what we're doing. That we're testifying the good news of Jesus Christ. What's the good news? The good news is that he came to save us from eternal judgment. And he came to save everybody. It's offered for everybody. The good news is Jesus Christ died for us. A man died, yeah, but he's more than a man. That God died for our sin, took our sin, took our place. Man, this is good news because prior to that, you were dead. You're not only dead alive, dead in your sin, dead man walking. You're dead in eternity. You are coming to the judgment. What are you going to do about the judgment to come? What are you going to do about the sin? And we'll talk about that's another aspect of the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do also? He comes to convict the world of sin and guilt in regards to sin. See, we wouldn't even, you know, it's, it's embedded in every human being unless you're a psychopath. That you, you would just kill somebody and not even think about it. You know when you do something that's wrong. And what I mean by wrong, universally, morally wrong. You know when you lie. You know before you lie. Or maybe you've slipped out a lie. But you know you have to rationalize things. In other words, you know if you're committing adultery. You know when you're living in sin. And this is, this is the, the issue, the world. This is what the Holy Spirit does. The world, he will convict the world of guilt. This is Jesus talking in regard to sin because men do not believe in me. So they don't believe in him. So here comes the Holy Spirit to convict you of sin. Now do you believe? That's how we get there, guys. The Ten Commandments will, uh, will get you there. Why do I say that? Because have you ever lied before? Command, the Ten Commandments tell us not to bear false witness. Uh, Jesus said, you've heard, it, uh, you've heard it said, do not commit adultery. But he said, uh, I say to you that any uh, man that looks upon a woman or a woman looks upon a man with lust has committed adultery in his heart already. So the convict, you've done it. I've done it. We've all done it. You've lied. You've stolen. You've, 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 you've broken his moral law you've broken his laws all of us have and so the holy spirit comes to convict us and that's a good thing because that conviction leads us to jesus christ now what do you do with them well I, many people are going to reject that why because men love darkness uh many people will say well i've accepted jesus christ i got fire insurance well you don't have fire insurance that's not the way this works you don't just say that you believe in Jesus Christ and, and things aren't changed for you because his laws are still, they're not just abolished. They're not just like, I don't care about, you know, I don't care about my laws anymore. No, he's a righteous and, and, and he's a righteous king and he's a just God. He is a gracious God. But here's how you got to do it his way, not your way. And that's what I'm saying. So he convicts the world of sin regard to sin because men do not believe in me, he said. In regard to righteousness, in regard to judgment, there's a judgment coming because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Who's the prince of this world? His name is Satan. His name is the devil. He is Diablo. He is that, that person. He is the prince of this world. And he is a, a, a person. Uh, he's not just some kind of thing or ideal. These aren't ideals. Jesus Christ is is uh, the person of a Trinity, third, one of the, uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He's the second part of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is a who, not a what. It's not an ideal. It's not just, oh, it's his spirit. It's his spirit. It's actually living inside of us. That's I, I, I've got to beat this down because that's what we need to, to see, and I hope you're seeing that. Conviction is another courtroom uh, term, you know, the action. A judge convicts and condemns those who are guilty. You know, we have convicts uh, in prison. We have convicts. They've been convicted of crimes. And just like on the earth, we convict people and judge them and send them to prison. 
Why do you think uh, you're glad for that? Because there are some bad dudes and women in prison. And be glad for that. You don't want them running out in the street, do you? Maybe you want them in your neighborhood as your neighbor. Not to say that somebody can't change, but there are some bad dudes out there. And um, so, just like we would have on the earth, don't you think that God, since he's the judge, would have a judgment time? And he does convict us. There's a conviction happening. But praise the Lord, it's happening on this side right now. For you, you're being convicted. If you're watching this, I would think the Holy Spirit's convicting you of sin. And because humans do not want to change, we love our sin. Change doesn't come from others or cajoling words or even from ourselves necessarily. Uh, we need to repent, yes, but the change that happens is an inner work. See, it has to happen inside. God knows us and it's gracious. This is a gracious by the way of conviction. He comes and he works in our hearts. He convicts us. You are a sinner. That's how you've got to come humbly to Jesus Christ. If you haven't done that, uh, I hope this is making sense to you. You have to come humbly to him. You know that you, you're a sinner. And there's a judgment to come. What are you doing about judgment day? So, you come to him. You ask him for forgiveness. And you make him Lord. You ask him for forgiveness. Ask him to come live inside of you and then dwell. And he will do that. You will be changed. That'll be the way we know that you are a Christian. You will be changed. Remember Bob? He used to be a drunk. He ain't a drunk no more. What's going on? Uh, he didn't just do it on his own. The Lord has changed him. It is a miracle. The leopard spots have been changed. <laughs> Identify, identity is what, it's not who, uh, the Holy Spirit's identity, but it's not what, excuse me, but who, the paraclete. The relationship, I will ask the Father and I will give you another paracletos to be with you, meta. And that's in forever. That's in the future. God's going to be with us in the future forever. The spirit of truth, the word cannot accept him because it neither sees. The world can't accept this message. That's why, my opinion is why we're not supposed to judge the world. That's why Stephen said, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they do because they don't see. They are spiritually blind to this message because it neither sees him nor knows him. Considered uh, but you know him, for he lives with you, para, right now. And he will be E-N. He will be in you. He will be in you. Final thoughts on this. Romans 8.10. If, and if Christ is in you, the body is dead of sin, but the spirit of life because of righteousness. So you are dead. If Christ, if Christ is in you, you're not walking around living in the world system anymore. You're not walking around living in your sin. You have turned from your sin. You have repented, but we're all sinners. You know, this message is what the, 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 the message of the gospel is being very diluted and very, uh, there's a lot of heresy. Uh, we don't continue in our sin. Do we sin? Yes, and we repent. Is God working on us? Yes, but we don't stay. That's not what God's calling us to. He knows that we're frail. He knows that we're human. He has grace. He has forgiveness, past, present, and future for your sins. He knows that you're, you're going to fail at times. You don't live that life, though. You see what I'm saying? Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It's no longer you. You're dead. You were dead spiritually. Now you're dead to yourself. You, you made that decision. That's the decision. That's what's at stake. You got, you're dead. That's what the, the visual representation is when we get baptized. We die. We come back a new if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. That's what you are. You're not the old man over there anymore. Yeah, you're lugging around the flesh. Yeah, you've got to deal with it. Yep. There's some, glory, there's some processing going on. Yes, you're a baby Christian maybe perhaps and you're struggling. 
you'll get there. <laughs> Just stay in the word. You'll get there. God will help you in this process. He's promised to help you. He'll convict you every time. If you're a, if you're a Christian today and you're living in sin, if you're saying you're a Christian, you're living in sin. Boy, are you miserable right now? And I feel for you because I've done the same thing, and I know what that what that's like. And so I want to encourage you to come back, turn around, come back, come on, come on. Ask God for forgiveness. Repent. Turn from that sin. Get out of that relationship. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. It's not worth it. It's really not worth it. This is the only thing that's worth it. Your sin isn't worth it. It may be bringing you monetary comfort or something now, but I guarantee you, I guarantee if it's a bad relationship, if it's a relationship that you're giving up Christ for, I guarantee you, and you're codependent, you're compromising this, your walk, I guarantee you, I'm getting close. I guarantee you, this is not going to end well for you. And uh, please, please, I beg you. Uh, how this is done is obtained by faith. And those of you that say, oh, I have my faith, this is exactly how it is. It's obtained by faith. We, we entrust our lives to Jesus Christ. We entrust that he is who he says he is, that he died, rose on the third day, that he is going to forgive us our sins, and he is going to send the paraclete. He is going to live with inside of us. This is all a part of faith. We entrust in God. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Obedience is essential. It's not by works. Listen, if you're, it isn't by works how we obtain faith. It's not, how, it's not by works how we attain faith. Heaven, that's not going to fly. What it is, 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 is not works plus faith. It's faith, and then it's works. Those are evident. That's evident that you're a Christian. That's an evidence that you're a Christian, that your life has changed. That's how you're able to testify. That's how you're living under conviction. You know. Uh, listen, now, First John, I, and I talked about it yesterday. First John 3, I told you it's round 3. So First John 3, 24, now. He who keeps the commandments abides in him and he in him. And by this, we know that we abide in us, the spirit whom he has given us. This is your test. You want to know if you're a Christian? You want to know if you're born again? You don't know? For those that aren't born again, uh, we, we establish how to get there. You, you come humbly. You receive Jesus Christ's forgiveness. You uh, accept him as who he says he is, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Lord of the universe. He's the creator of the universe. He died. He rose again. And he, and he lives inside of you. And you, 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 you've walked away from your sin. You want to give that up, okay? And you come humbly and you, and you receive his forgiveness. Now, for those of you that say, I'm a Christian and I walk on the faith. Here it is. Here's the test, how, how you'll know. Ask yourself. I don't need to tell you. It says, 1 John, now who, he who keeps the commandments abides in him. Well, are, we're sinners. Don't tell me that his commandments are not are abolished. That's the way we're, uh, to, what's wrong with his commandments and living with his commandments? Honor the, uh, love the Lord. He, Jesus said, uh, he broke them down to two. Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And second is like the first, love your neighbor as yourself. And those are the, those are encompass the Ten Commandments right there. We're to strive. We're to strive for that. We are to live. He who keeps the commandments abides in him. You know, we're to abide in him. We're not, uh, without him, we can do nothing. He is the vine. We are the branches. We abide in him. We dwell with him and he in, in, in us and and he in him. And by this, we know that he abides in him. This is how you know. Because you'll want to keep his commandments. You'll want to read his word. You'll understand his word. You'll want to testify. You'll want to bring others to Jesus Christ. You'll have a hunger. You'll have the Holy Spirit. You'll be a changed person. This is how you know. That's how you know. And let me tell you. As I get off of here. It's possible to all. Behold, I stand at the door. Jesus says, Behold, in Revelation, I stand at the door. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he knocks at the door of your heart. Is he knocking at your heart? Let him in, will you? Don't, don't reject him. Men are rejecting him. 
men and women all around are rejecting him because it why because they want to continue living what kind of life a sinful life that's why that's it men love their sin we drink it like it was water we love it we love we want to keep our sin uh, because we believe that's making us happy and it's not uh, it's it's keeping you away from the indwelling Christ Spirit of dwelling. Ezekiel said in 36, 27, Ezekiel, this is like prophetic. I will put my spirit within you and I will cause you to walk in my statues. Everybody, this is such an amazing thing. If you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you and you want to do his commandments. You want to, you want to love him. You love him. He saved your soul from hell and you have peace that you can't and joy that you not happiness not fleeting joy eternal joy in his uh in his presence is the fullness of joy fullness of joy. full you're full in his presence in his presence he indwells in you as a christian that ought to make you think about it a little differently if you're not a christian behold i stand at your the door of your heart and i knock Jesus doesn't want you to go to hell. Jesus doesn't. He, he has every right to judge you for what you did. It's fair. <laughs> He's letting us off the hook. But not really. He's not just letting you off the hook. It's, it's more than that. He loved you so much that he, he died in your place and took all my suffering, your suffering, what you and I deserve. And he put it God put it on his son so that you and I could live with him forever in eternity. I mean, it's the best deal. That, And I'm testifying to you right now, just like people testify to products, but this isn't a product. This is eternal life. And I'm testifying to you. This is the best deal. I'm testifying that you don't, you don't want to miss out on this deal. So right where you're at, if, if you're if you're saying you need Jesus Christ, you've come to him humbly, that you're a sinner and you need Christ. And uh, you, you wanna, you know that you, you need forgiveness and you, you wanna spend eternity with him and you want him to dwell in you. You wanna be made alive, made whole. All you have to do is talk to him and ask that and then tell somebody tell tell somebody about it tell others what has happened to you and if you don't mind write me i'll put my email down tell me i want to rejoice with you and uh also if you need help in your life with addiction codependency uh whatever you need some counseling biblical, biblical counseling i will do my best give me a shout my name is randy i love you I say this every day. This is my catchphrase, but it's true. I love you, but Jesus Christ loves you more. He loved you to death. All right. God bless you. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. Lord willing. Take care, guys. Bye.